in the last video we were talking about how to compute variables and then we also talked about uh, the different methods of computing variables and in this video we will be talking about the descriptive statistics now we will be discussing why do we have to perform this descript descriptive statistics analysis what are the uses of uh, the tests what are the values that we get out of these uh, descriptive statistics values so let's start as the word says descriptive so we use this function or this analysis to actually describe our data so what do we calculate in this descriptive analysis usually we try and calculate the mean of the data standard deviation skewness and kurtosis why do we have to perform this descriptive statistics test as first of all it helps us in describing the data and most of the times we are checking these values to check the normality of the data if our data is normally distributed or it is not normally distributed which is seen with the help of these values uh, the ranges of these values and sometimes with the bell curve and some sometimes with the peak and leanness of data so let's start first we are going to see how we can calculate these values in spss and then we are going to talk each of them in detail so in order to go for your descriptive analysis you go to this analyze button descriptive statistics and descriptives so what did we do analyze descriptive statistics and descriptives so once you click this descriptive button is going to give you this option what data you want descriptive statistics to be calculated for so we have already computed our variables so for now let's go to these computed variables these are our three computed variables let's put them in the analysis tab and now in this you can simply go for an okay button for now and see what are the results so there's another there's a table which is giving us the values of mean standard deviation maximum and minimum and this is also telling us that there are 250 respondents the minimum value of the mean of the mean is 1.29 for first variable 1.36 1.11 and then the maximum value is 5 and then 4.18 and 4.56 the same way the mean values are presented here and the standard deviation is presented here so let's go back and do the same analysis again but this time we will have to go to the option part option and this time for example if we only want four values which is mean which, which is already checked standard deviation it is already checked for example we are not interested in maximum and minimum but we are interested in the kurtosis and skewness value so continue and press okay now you will get another table which is showing us now the mean values of the three variable the standard deviation the skewness part remember that the statistics part is the actual value of skewness the standard error is not usually interpreted in social sciences research and kurtosis the statistics part is the kurtosis value now first of all what are these values representing the mean value is actually the average of your data if you add or sum all of your responses and then divide them by number of responses you will get these values for each variable differently the standard deviation will tell you 
how much your data deviates from the mean. Now, the skewness and kurtosis, they actually talk about the skewness, for example, will tell you the leanness of data, how much your data lean towards negative side or a positive side. We'll, we'll see a bell curve and then we'll have a very clear idea. What do we mean by this? And kurtosis is actually describing the peak of the data, the height of the data. So these four values are most of the time essential to calculate for your research before you go to your uh, hypothesis testing because these are the values which are going to give you the idea that your data is normally distributed or not normally distributed. Now, we cannot obviously uh, say much about mean and deviation, standard deviation, but what about skewness and kurtosis? So the simple understanding is that the skewness and kurtosis should be near to zero, which means for example, if you just look at this innovation, it is 0 0.003. This is very, very close to zero. This means that we can say that skewness wise, this data is normally di distributed. But we cannot just have a final word only by looking at these values. But still, if it is close to zero, which in all three uh, variables is the case, then we can say that our data is normally distributed. Same case with kurtosis that ideally its values should be close to zero or exactly zero maybe. But still, although different researchers, different authors, different statisticians, they have different ranges based on what kind of data you're using and what kind of formulas you're using, what kind of researches uh, you're conducting. But for now, if you just understand that your values of skewness should be between minus one to plus one, then you can say that you're on the safe side. And your values of kurtosis should be between minus three and plus three. But as I said, that there are contradictions and there are uh, circumstances in which you may or may not accept these ranges. So for kurtosis, minus one to plus one range that data or your skewness value should be between minus one to plus one. For kurtosis, your values should be between uh, minus three to plus three. So this is the range. Now, how can we see the bell curve of these uh, variables? And just analyze that uh, if our data is normally distributed or not. So let's go back to our analyze. Descriptive statistics, frequencies. And this time, if you see, we are going to put these three variables into our analysis window. And if we go to this statistics or charts and just give a histogram. And the moment you're going to click histogram, it will ask you that if you want to see a normal curve on histogram. Yes, we want to see a normal curve on histogram. So continue and now click OK. Now this time we are going to have some different results, but what we are interested in is this histogram. So it has calculated histogram with normal curve or with bell curve for all of our variables. So this time you can clearly see that your data, this is how your data is actually uh, distributed and for the second variable and for the third variable. So you have a date normal curve for all of these variables. So this is how you can see your normal curve. Uh, there's yet another method through which you can see and also to some extent analyze if your data is normally distributed or not, or if it is in the acceptable range or not. So let's try that one as well. Analyze descriptive statistics and explore. This time, we're going to reset it, put all our 
three variables into dependent list. And in the plot, you can check this histogram and continue and OK. Now this time we're also going to learn a little further function of what else we can do in SPSS. So this time you can see that it's not showing any bell curve or any curve. So you can just double click it and it's going to take you to another window. And in this window, if you can go to this elements and then go for this show distribution curve, it is going to show you this distribution curve. And at the same time, it is telling you that your data is normally distributed. So this is an addition to what we already know that how can we actually know if our data is normally distributed or not. Usually people analyze it visually by just looking at the curve. But if you're not sure, you can take this help of SPSS. And if it is saying that it's a normal curve, you can uh, proceed with your uh, data analysis. Let's do it for the second type variable. Double click it, go to elements, and then show distribution curve. And you can again see that somehow it is saying that it's normally distributed. Let's do it for the third variable. So we are just trying to make sure that our data is fine and we are satisfied with our distribution curve. So this time it is also showing a curve and showing that it's a normal data. So this is how you can actually use this function of descriptive statistics. Now, just to summarize that, why do we do it? First of all, to describe the data. Second, sometimes we want to check the normality of the data. Then the how, how many and what kind of values do we uh, try and uh, analyze? Mean, standard deviation, skewness and kurtosis. Mean is the average of the data. Standard deviation is the deviation from the mean of the data. Skewness actually tells us about the leanness of data. And kurtosis talks about the peakness of data, the height of the data. And then we can also draw these curves just to make sure that we have a, a visual understanding as well, that what kind of data uh, we are going to have. And this is very helpful in actually deciding that what kind of test you're going to apply for your hypothesis testing. So uh, there's going to be another video on the parametric and non-parametric tests, but this is where you actually decide if you have to go for parametric tests or for non-parametric tests. So thank you very much for now. In the next window, uh, in the next video, we will be talking about some more things and we will be moving to our concept of correlation. First, we will try and understand what is correlation and then we are going to see how we can analyze correlation in SPSS. Thank you very much.